What's up, everyone? How's it going? My heart rate is, for some reason, 20 beats above average right now. Normally 47, but right now 66. No idea what's going on. Might be getting sick. Let's see. Um, cool. So today I want to talk to you all about selling your work authentically. Um, and I kind of want to start like I normally do with, uh, with just a story to help kind of contextualize a lot of this. Um, I don't really like just jumping into the skill. I don't, I don't know. I feel like we all learn better from stories. Uh, so let's, let, let, let's, let's essentially cover a story that helped me figure this out for myself, right? Uh, this is, anybody want to guess who this is? <laughs> yeah, it's my dad, yes. This is my dad. Um, and he's, uh, he, was, he was rocking the Bill's Face hoodie like a couple months ago and he dropped by for the first time to San Francisco. And uh, a couple of things about my dad. Uh, he was born in Pakistan, right? So this is him. He came to America in the uh, in the early '90s, looking like <laughs> looking <laughs> looking like this. My mom sent me this picture today, by the way. I said, "Give me a picture of Papa when he was uh, when he first came to America." So I'd never seen this picture before. But this is he came to America in the early '90s, and you know he was your classic kind of immigrant story. Drove taxis, flipped pizzas at Sir Pizza, um, and uh, yeah, mostly mostly drove taxis in New York City, Miami, and then uh, did a bunch of restaurant work, right? Uh, in the late 90s, he got a job at Nissan. So that's him right down the right. And uh, he got a job selling cars at Nissan uh, in Miami. And uh, over 25 years later, what's really interesting is he now works at what is the most highest performance dealership in the country, like in the top. They don't actually, they don't have like a number one rank or anything like that. It's just like by percentage. So he's one of the top percentages. And he's ranked either number one in his region every year or, which they actually do rankings for these people, it's pretty wild. Um, or they do like, um, or, he's, or he's top in his region in terms of performance by percentage, right? So pretty much, my dad is like a sales machine. Like he's just so good at it, it's crazy. Um, and this is in the car business. He has not left the car business for over 25 years. Uh, this is actually his dealership when I was growing up. He worked at Toyota. So during middle school, high school, he worked here at Toyota. And uh, that's me. Uh, so 14 year old me would be sitting at his office looking like this. And you know, I would usually go to his office because uh, I would do homework there. He'd pick me up from school and we'd go there. We'd go back to his office sometimes. And I loved his office because you have coffee, popcorn, things like that, right? Um, and so I'd literally sit in his office, right? Like I'm like on the, his office is not that big. It's maybe the size of that room actually. And I'd, and I'd, have, like a, and I'd have like a desk on the side. And I ended up learning a lot from, uh, from just listening to him talk to customers for like years, right? Um, uh, just by me sitting on the side and hearing him have these conversations. Uh, and what I learned is my dad literally never tried to sell anything. He was never trying to push a product on his customer. He was never trying to be the sales guy, like ever. Like, you would rarely hear him talk about trying to like, sell an upgrade to the customer. Um, and again, these are people coming into Honda, or in this case Toyota, buying a car, right? So that's their intention. And uh, his goal is to, one, get them to lock down the car, but then to also do a bunch of other stuff, which the dealership does, to make more money on the customer, right? Um, and um, I think what's really interesting about my dad, having, to this day I observe him, I go to his dealership sometimes, and uh, he just really tries to understand the person in front of him. You know what I mean? He never really does anything else. He just tries to understand them, and at the end of some time period, maybe 10, 20 minutes, he'll make them an offer, right? Something that he feels would be good for them, and uh, also work for him. That's kind of how he always operated. And uh, you know, growing up in this dealership, uh, you start to compare with other people as well. Because generally, if you're into a car dealership, you can kind of just eavesdrop at any office. Like you can walk around, hear how different salespeople do their thing. And I would do that actually. I would be like, okay, like what's my dad doing, and what are the other people doing? And the other people gave me this sort of vibe <laughs> half the time. It was actually kind of crazy. They just gave me this sort of vibe, and I think a lot of you guys know this sort of vibe. It's like you're kind of like a kind of sale, like used car sales salesperson, right? Um, where they're just trying to like cut you a deal. They're trying to like rope you into something, you know, like lock you into something. And um, they would say things like this. Hey, you know, we have a package that gives you leather seats for just $1,000 more. Are you interested, right? So I'd hear these phrases as a kid. You know, the Honda Accord has a feature that detects your blind spots for $2,000 more. But hey, because you're here today, 25% off, you know, things like that. Um, the new 2010 Camry is an amazing car. It has these XYZ features that no one else offers. This is the best car in its class, and you should have this car. 
And you know, generally, these statements will all have the same reply. Does anyone have, have a guess, like what the kind of replies were? No. Yeah, it's, I think you all know what like a awkward type reply, because you all have been pitched like this. <laughs> oh, interesting, I'll let you know, you know, cool. Or awkward chuckle, <laughs> you know, I think not right now, you know. Um, that sort of vibe, right? And it almost felt like these salespeople were delivering an IRL ad, like in person. Like they were literally an ad, but as a human being. It was, uh, it was interesting. And it uh, turns out a lot of you are being this guy. Uh, you are not being uh, my dad in this case. You are actually being this guy. Whether you believe it or not right now, um, you're kind of being this guy. And there's some pros to being this guy, but there's also like, a lot of cons to being this guy at this stage. Um, and I know this because of last Friday's exam day. Um, 15 projects, I actually counted, 15 projects were either uh, flat or down, right? So that means you either, the graph didn't move or it went down, right? And 11 projects were slightly up, but it didn't feel like there was like a push. You know like you guys come in on the final Friday, you get like one person to check your thing out, and then you say it went up? It's sort of like that sort of vibe, you know? Like it's kind of like, oh, you kind of just like, you kind of just did something near the end and you counted as, as an up, but eh. I kind of know the backstory, you know, like you didn't actually, it wasn't actually a big push. And I think two projects I, from last week at least I saw, um, I saw like there was a big leap, like a really intentional big push throughout the whole week, right? Um, and that was kind of interesting to me. And this is when you break it down, this is what it looks like, right? Like red being uh, uh, didn't move or down, yellow being like a slight up and green being like, it was like a legitimate push. Now at the end of the day, the graph is like, your graphs are only like one signal to like me understanding what's going on in your life. Like that's it. So I wouldn't read into this too much right now. Like I wouldn't, again, we'll talk about graphs later, but again, for me, it's one signal. And it's a signal that helps me understand that some, like selling is not happening, right? Um, and what this means is 50% of you made zero movement last week, right? And to me, that is insane. Like that is actually like, that's crazy how like that can actually happen. Um, and I don't think it's because of a lack of trying, right? Like I don't, think, I don't think anyone here is like being lazy. I, I, mean, I can't name a single person, to be honest. Uh, you all are putting in a um, ton of effort. You're trying new things, so then you know what gives. Um, again, I see you putting in effort, so what gives, right? Can anybody can maybe like give me like their thoughts? Um, otherwise, it's just kind of me roasting some of you. But anyone want to give me your thoughts? Like what's kind of going on in like your life, or what do you think is going on? Um, if you were someone that maybe didn't make big moves last week. What's, what gives? Yeah. Um, it was just a little emotionally toiling for me last week. An emotionally toiling week, I get the up. So th those come, yes. You spent a lot of our week debugging and you got stuck in this like focus of like, let's fix this, let's fix this. And yeah. Sort of like taking a step back and like, okay, yeah. okay that's where we made a mistake. A lot of your week spent debugging. Let's do maybe one more. Anybody have their thought, like honest thoughts? What happened last week for them? Ryan? My commute is making me Commute's tough, yeah. right? I think at the end of the day, what I'm kind of hearing is something along the lines of like maybe personal management or time management, right? Um, to me, what the graphs show me, like what this shows me, is that SF2 has like a selling problem. They don't, have an, they don't have a problem of like not putting in the work. They don't have a problem of all, any, it's like a selling thing. At the end of the day, the graph shows me your ability to like sell the thing, right? So um, that's what I think. I think you have a selling problem. And uh, I think uh, I, I talked to some of you even last week and I was kind of asked, asked you like, hey, what gives? You know, like at the end of Friday, like what, what's going on? It's been three weeks. Uh, why are you still at that same state? And it's like, oh, far as what I got right now is kind of crappy and then finished. It's not there yet, you know, like I'm still working on it, right? And I think the reality is truly is, is that will always be the answer. That is still my answer to this day for what I work on today, you know? And I think it's really like, it's always gonna be crappy and unfinished. Um, I think a lot of people think uh, Facebook as a company is still crappy and unfinished. Uh, you know what I mean? So everyone's always gonna be feeling like something's not right. Uh, so that's the reality, right? This is like a very sad reality that I realized like many years ago now, but it's always gonna be crappy and unfinished. So what do you do, right? And I think I also thought about this um, uh, earlier today, which is I feel like all of you actually do have something. Like every single one of you has like something in the sense of like you have a thing and you can describe it and you can show it. You can do all these things. Um, so no matter how early you are, how crappy you think your thing is, in my eyes, all of you have something. So now what do you do, right? You have to make it better by either one, improving your own skills, improving your craft, right? As an engineer, designer, whatever you are. And then two, by selling. 
Um, and I think one thing that people get tripped up on when it comes to selling, um, and I'll talk about what I mean by selling in a bit, um, is you don't have to pretend like you're selling like the greatest thing ever. Like you're, you have like you're selling like the top tier Mercedes Benz, right? In reality, what you have is equivalent to like a 1996 Civic. Um, it's kind of old, it's rusted, you know, it barely moves, it barely turns on. And you know, your goal is not to pretend like you sell a Mercedes. It's to find the people that are down to rock the 96 Civic that you have. That's actually what you're trying to do right now. Um, and a lot of you, it's actually exhausting to pretend like you're selling a Mercedes or you're selling something that's hyper legitimate, when in reality you have like this rusty old car. Um, and I also think this, again, based on my, I reflected on this this morning, 100% of you are very good at selling. Like every single one of you here is actually pretty good at selling. Let me tell you why. Um, one, you were able to talk about what you're working on. One of the first, actually, good things about selling is knowing what you are selling, right? So you're able to talk about what, what you are doing. Um, you're able to show a demo, actually. All of you have like, a visual that you, can, like, that you have that, um, that like, corresponds to what you're working on, right? So it's not just like voices. And then three, I think all of you are able to have a conversation and learn from others. Like you all feel like, uh, kind of normal people that can have normal conversations and not be weird about it, right? You can learn from other people and have these conversations. So if someone does feel like they hate your thing or they do have feedback, I think all of you are actually pretty good at like taking it like, and not taking it too personally, hopefully. These are all important things and this is, all the, this is actually everything you need to sell. Um, and today I just want to cover three strategies to help you all improve your selling game, um, even for like these next four days until Friday um, and hopefully for the next, you know, uh, n number of weeks we have left here. Uh, so the first thing is, and this is maybe the most important one where if you take away anything from what I'm saying here today, it is this. Um, it is stop marketing, start selling. Uh, what is marketing? This is what marketing is. This is like my definition of marketing. Marketing and also ChatGPT's definition of marketing based on when I asked it. Um, it's building an audience for your work. That's marketing. It's creating a mass of people who you encourage to buy or support or be a part of what you are doing. That's marketing, right? I think we all kind of know what marketing is, and I think when we think of marketing, we often think of things like Apple or Nike, right? They make these great campaigns that make us feel like we want their products. That's marketing. Selling is this. Selling is getting them to actually take the action that you want them to take at the end of the funnel, right? At the end of the, at the, end of the day. Maybe it's a follow, maybe it's a listen, maybe it's a purchase, maybe it's for them to use your product um, and be an active, whatever it is. That's the end action, right? So that's the difference. So whenever I say the word selling, by the way, I know that usually means uh, a good in exchange for money, uh, but please just kind of think about selling as uh, really uh, the ability to get someone else to take an action that you want them to take. That's what selling is. Um, and that's a very big difference between marketing and selling. I think most of you all today, many of you, not all of you, are actually marketing uh, most of the days. Um, and I want to kind of prove, I'm not saying it's a bad thing actually. Um, I'm not saying you should stop either. But I kind of want to um, put some data around what you are doing for a second. Um, a lot of you are doing this. You, are, you start with something like an email or a Reddit post or a TikTok or a Reel or a Twitter post, right? That's like one of your starting actions. From there, you expect people to then go to your landing page or your link tree. From there, you expect them to then go and then take their first step to do something, right? So maybe it's like, listening to your song, maybe it's buying something or subscribing, right? So you're expecting them to take one, two, um, three, four actions, right? It's actually four actions, sorry. So from the landing page, you know, they see your landing page, they see your link tree. You now expect them to click something on your link tree or your landing page, you know? It's one thing to look at your landing page, right? But no, you expect them to actually like click something, like go to something. And then you expect them to do the, more, the most important thing, which is uh, now they follow you on Spotify. They made an account on your website, blah, blah, blah. Do you see how crazy this is? It's actually pretty hard to do, right? Let's put some number, let's put some like industry average numbers on this, right? Industry average, I would say, is this, at least for build space. This is like my experience are like numbers for this sort of flow. 100% of people will come and see your uh, Instagram reel, right? So they can't not watch your reel. It's just going to pop up, right? So they watched it. 10% of them go to your profile. Right? Or sorry, 10% of them go to your profile and click your link tree or your landing page, right? Um, or maybe they click the link if you posted a link, right? 1% of them will literally go to your landing page and maybe click create account, or maybe click, uh, uh, or maybe click pre-order your song, or maybe click something else, right? And of those, 0.5%, or of the whole 
0.5% at the end will actually take that action, right? And if the percents don't make sense to you, let's, let's add real people, right? That means if 100 people see your tweet, 10 people will click the link, one people will click the actual CTA, and then you have 0.5 people at the end who actually take an action, which rounds out to zero people, because there's no such thing as half a person, right? So this is reality, right? A lot of you send 100 people to your stuff, and then nothing happens, and you're like, wow, nothing happened. Why? <laughs> well, it's because the math is against you. You simply are losing to this, right? Um, you thought you were selling, um, but in reality, you're not. You're just, you're getting destroyed by this right now. And then, what do you have to do then, right? In reality, you have to send that, if you, if you do this strategy, you have to send a lot more people in the door. Let's just say it's 1,000. You put 1,000 people in the door, right? 100 people click a link. 10 people click create account. Five people actually then go and literally finish making the account, buy your shirt, listen to your song, blah, 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 right? It's fucking, it's actually crazy. It's actually insane. But this is reality, right? This is actually how reality works. Um, not everyone you show your stuff to will magically be like this user of the thing that you want to do. And it's the depressing reality that only 99 or some small percent of people will stick around by the end, right? Um, and that's okay though, because the world moves fast and um, the best you can do is get them through this, right? So this is a game I think a lot of you guys here are playing right now. You're playing this game. Um, you're trying to play the game of getting people through like all these steps. And then can anyone tell me what maybe is like a different game we can play? Yes. So we, we haven't been doing this. We haven't like posted on Reddit or anything. So what we've been doing is basically just door knocking and then being really nice to people and having real conversation with them. And then yep. if they have a problem that they want to solve, we say, hey, we can solve your problem. Okay, great. So I think Kieran's on to onto something here, which is that what if you just went straight to the five people? Like if your goal is to get these five people, why don't you just go straight to the five people? Um, it's gonna be hard to find those five people, like in the real world, in real life, but what if you actually just somehow went straight there? Um, I wanna give a small example here. Uh, at Build Space, when we were starting off, I wasn't marketing at all. Um, we were selling. What does that mean? Selling meant you came to Build Space and made an account and you did a tutorial with us. That's what I was optimizing for, right? So then, yeah, I'm not gonna sit there and make TikToks, right? What, I'm, what am I gonna do? Oh, let's make landing pages for every college uh, and then go to every college's CS Discord and then essentially um, onboard people from individual colleges into build space. Like by essentially creating like a college, uh, a college themed page for every college, right? Um, now this ended up working for us, why? Because very early on, um, our first users came from college CS Discord groups. Like we just learned that, right? So like, oh cool, like they're just coming from these groups anyways. What if we did more of that, right? Um, and then we, that was a very direct way to the audience. And of course, these types of uh, students, they loved this sort of thing because I can do a thing at Build Space, put on my resume. So yeah, of course, I'm gonna do that. Um, but this is an example of just going straight to the five people, right? I didn't, but even here, like some people are gonna see my Discord post and then they're gonna churn, right? But for the most part, this is a lot more targeted, like 90% more targeted than like making like a YouTube video or making like an ad per se, or like a reel. Um, because I'm going straight to my people. And where are my people? My people being college students, CS college students. Oh, they're in Discord groups. Okay, so then all I have to do is get in every single Discord group and make a relationship with every single moderator, and then that's it. So we had like 100 relationships, with, over 100 moderators that we had relationships with at that point uh, within, a, within the course of a month. And we had a very clear funnel, right? Every CS Discord group gave us on average 35 users. So if we had 100 Discord groups, we have 3,500 users, right? Still a hard game to play, actually, but that's how we got 3,500 people to first sign up for what we were doing. It's actually really, really difficult. But again, this was a lot more targeted, and it was kind of us going straight to the people. Um, and I want to cover a couple of examples here with you all, right? Um, I remember Daniel was there for office hours like last week. Where's Daniel? Daniel, yeah. He was there for office hours last week, and uh, he was like, all right, Farza, like, uh, uh, I'm gonna start making content, what type of content should I make, right? I'm like, well, Daniel, why are you making content? And he's like, oh, well, I need to sell the more of the blocks. And well, it's like, is content the most efficient way to sell more blocks? Like, is that, is you making funny videos or you making these videos, it's certainly one way, but is it the most efficient way to sell more of these, of, of these, of these devices? Um, and then immediately, I think people in the group started having some more ideas, which is like, 
uh, what if you sold blocks to um, co-working spaces? Can you call up 10 co-working spaces and then have them all buy five blocks for their, for their offices? What if you sold the block to schools, teachers, who want their students to be more focused when they get into class? So teachers spend $10 of their own money to buy the block, right? And I think it was these sorts of ideas that got us thinking, like, oh, well, like, I don't have to sit here and just expect people to go through this flow. Like, again, even with Daniel's case, it was how do I go straight to the five people, right? And then who are your five people? Oh, maybe it's teachers who want to make their kids more focused, co-working spaces who want to do X. Um, you know, even, I was saying, even go to companies, like small companies um, that uh, want their workers to be more focused. Who knows, right? I don't know what's actually going to work. Uh, anybody else have, like, different ideas? That's not just, you know, make videos about the block. What other, any other, any other ideas on how I can sell this? Yeah. And then do what? Sure, great. We can try. Yeah, let's go to a store where people buy stuff like this and say, do you, can you stock this? Why not? Yeah, sounds like an okay use of time. Maybe it takes an hour or two. Who knows? Yes. Hacker houses, sure. Um, let's hit up every hacker house and say, do you want you know, uh, your people to be hacking more in a more focused way, you know, why not? Um, again, these things, I don't know if it's going to work, but worth a shot, because we're going straight to the person. Anybody else? Maybe one more? Yeah, Roy. Schools? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think I mentioned schools. Like, your average teacher, I think, would, uh, I don't know, middle school teacher might love this, you know? Um, I'm not sure how much, how annoying it is for kids to use their devices in class nowadays. I don't know, but I'm guessing it's pretty annoying for teachers. But I don't know. So again, that's another, that's an example, right, of, Hey, Daniel, you don't actually have to make a bunch of videos that get, that, where you talk about your thing and then get a bunch of followers and blah, 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 blah. You can actually just make a call and just sell like 10 tomorrow. Like, how, how can we do that? Another example, Chesky, right? Uh, Brayden here somewhere? Yes, so Brayden, um, um, again, Brayden can do the same thing again, which is post on Reddit, <laughs> uh, post on uh, a bunch of places, and then expect people to come in. But again, he's playing this game, right? So Brandon, if you push 100 people from like a subreddit, or 100 people from maybe say Product Hunt, you end with not that many people, right? Um, what's like another idea that we can have for Brayden where you can just get potential people playing chess to use this thing? Yeah, Kieran. Yeah, exactly, that was, that's my answer. Like literally go to a local chess club if they still exist, and then literally show up and like, yo, you guys wanna use this? Uh, anybody else? How can we get, yes? Go to a chess tournament. Yeah, is there one happening this weekend? I don't know. I'm not, let's see. Anything else? Yes? Start a, start a chess tournament. Yeah, and then maybe get beginner, novice chess players to come in, uh, use the space and play chess, and then if they want to get better, $10 a month for chess key. You know, like, I don't know. Why not? Um, you know, one person gave me a really cool idea on Instagram because we posted Braden's uh, thing, and um, they said you should uh, uh, pay chess streamers. Because chess is a huge thing on social media. Like, every big streamer plays chess. It's like, oh, like, you know, I know you're not made of money, Braden, but like, huh, $100 for like a chess, a chess streamer that gets like 1,000 viewers on average, and then they use chess key for like 20 minutes? It doesn't sound that crazy. Worth a, worth a shot, worth to see even how much they cost. Why not, right? Um, but again, these are all great ideas. All ideas that are much better than just marketing chess key which I don't think is going to work. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this whole influencer model? For example, like in our case, like we're thinking of building relationships with DevOps blogs or platform engineering blogs. Yeah, so essentially influencer marketing? Yeah, in yeah. Way, yeah. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's good and it's worth, it's worth a shot. Um, it still feels like what is an even more direct way, um, but influencer stuff is cool, yeah, um, right? Yeah. Um, but I love the like, ideas like um, the one kind of Karen mentioned or even the one um, uh, Kelly mentioned, which is just, can you just go to where people play chess and then just show them and then see what they say? Yeah. So something kind of the ideas that you pointed out are more of the second strategy uh, for some uh -huh. are kind of, it seems much more related to how much face time you get with partners. Sorry, what's the question? Uh, so I, I'm wondering, I guess, is that always the case? Are you, are you always just basically optimizing for face time with your target? I think in the early days, the more FaceTime you can get, the better. And I'll talk some more about this as well, about why, about how you can like, optimize FaceTime. But yeah, I think in the early days for where you guys are at, um, yeah, what's the best way to sell? Often it's like someone showing up <laughs> in front of your face and then having a conversation with you or, show, or being shown the thing. 
Um, again, go to where your people are. You know, that's kind of like my best I can say. Yeah. So then, would you say that it might be worthwhile on the front end to compromise cash flow um, for utility, just to familiarize those five people with what a taste of what it is you might have to offer? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think most of you are kind of strapped for cash, so I think you should get these people to pay money um, if you're if you're selling something. Like honestly, I see. Um, yeah. Unless you have some money to kind of spare, then sure. But yeah, you should probably make a find a way to get people to just give you some dollars. Um, maybe really interesting. I think that the most classic way for an artist to kind of grow is kind of like making content, right? Um, and I would almost challenge that a little bit, which is like, damn, can we just throw a concert here? Um, or can we throw a concert somewhere for like 100 people, 50 people? Like, what does that kind of look like? What does that sound like? Is that a more efficient way? I think I don't know. Is that a more efficient way to get to, the, get to those five people at the end who really love your stuff, right? At the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to find the people who love your stuff. And I think that, I don't know, that's one way to do it. Um, any other ideas here on like uh, this sort of thing? Yes? Uh, get like the song to fit appropriately. Like sometimes you need to press songs like One more time, what is it? If you go to a club, sometimes you can ask them to give you a song. So if you can like get your song to fit. Sure, sure. Like, I think that's like an idea where it's like, you know, can I have a themed night one night where I'm like part of the listing even, right? Um, I think there's like a lot of, what you, generally we should do with these ideas is like, you know, my recommendation is you'll likely come up with a lot of these ideas. Like even for, uh, for Braden, like, you know, is it worth it for Braden to literally go to a chess tournament and spend all of his Friday, Saturday there? I, we don't know actually, but what I recommend doing for all these things that we're talking about is pick activities that are like really, really high value for you and not that much effort. So again, going to a chess tournament is actually the highest value thing, effort thing you can do. You're spending two days now, or a day at a chess tournament, versus like, damn, could we have just gotten into like five chess club discords? Would that have been faster? Could that have been done in an hour? Um, and then again, it's your responsibility as the builder to not get sucked into stuff that's gonna like, that sounds really cool and could work, but then like doesn't. So again, the club thing, that could be the best idea ever. I don't know, or it could be like the ma a massive time sink. It's just like, how do you optimize that task um, and just test it really fast? Um, yeah, and I think this is a, my kind of take on growth, right? Like eventually, these strategies will stop working, right? Eventually, these, it won't work anymore. Like I, I remember for Build Space, going to colleges just stopped working. Like we just, one, ran out of interesting colleges, um, and two, ran out of discords we could, we could bug. Um, we just ran out, right? So it breaks. But until it breaks, keep doing it. <laughs> And then, yeah, you gotta discover other stuff, you know? Second thing, have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Um, yeah, this one's actually kind of hard to understand because you all don't understand that your kind of superpower or you're kind of like, you have the superpower, which is that you're an individual and you're not that big. And you can actually give people like your like one-on-one -on -one time. Um, which is actually kind of interesting. Let me see what, and I think what that mean, what I mean by that is, right now at this stage, like I said earlier, you, all of you have like this 1996 Honda Civic, right? It's like, why are people gonna like check out your Honda Civic? It's not because it's a good car, you know? That's like maybe, maybe they get in because of that, but no, it's because they enjoy the conversation with you. They think that you're interesting. They think that what you're working on and how you're talking about it is interesting because you're telling them this Honda Civic is gonna be sick in like two months. And they're like, oh shit, cool. Like, can I check it out right now? Like, give it a shot. Does that kind of make sense? It's like your actual power is that you're an individual and you're someone who cares about what you're working on. You're not just like another like NPC that's trying to sell something on the TikTok shop, which is, I don't know, it's, 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 not, it's not as interesting. Um, and never underestimate this, uh, ever. Uh, I'll give you an example here just for myself. Uh, th my first customer ever for this company uh, for Zip Homeschool was this woman named Lucy Moore. Um, she had a young daughter. She was from, I believe, Texas or Georgia. And um, every single week, I'd have a conversation with Lucy one-on-one. -on -one. Just to give you guys context, at this point, I was um, um, offering my customers a curriculum. So it's like most, uh, you know, it's almost like uh, most homeschooling companies offer their customers curriculum like math exercises, reading exercises, blah, blah, blah. Now, of course, I didn't have any curriculum. That takes years to build up. It takes expertise to build up. But what I did have was myself and this fake person named Griffin, who I mentioned at the top here. Um, but you know, me and Griffin, were, like, we're, a, we're a dream team. 
And essentially every week on every, like I think Monday or something, I talk to Lucy one-on-one, -on -one, 30 minutes. She'd tell me what her daughter was struggling with. I would literally then go learn about how to make good exercises for her daughter. And I would at the end of every week, uh, Friday, give her a Google Doc with all the exercises that she could do with her daughter and reading and math. Now again, this is stuff that a big company can't do. Um, but also like understanding that I'm at, a, I'm at a fault, right? Like I don't have a giant library of content for my people to enjoy. How the fuck am I gonna compete with anyone else, right? Well, here's how I can compete. Uh, a mother looking for very you know, targeted kind of exercises for her daughter, reading and math exercises. I can do that. Um, and of course, maybe the first time I sucked at it, but then by week eight, it, we, we were on a flow, you know? I got really good at it. <laughs> um, and over time, I eventually hired someone to then do this for me, right? But again, that's the concept of having like a one-on-one -on -one conversation, like putting your personality and everything into what you got. Because again, at this point, I had nothing. It was literally nothing. It was just a promise. But then, yeah, I had a chat with her. She trusted me. It worked out, right? So I, I think this is kind of worth internalizing that, uh, yeah, there's a lot of noise, guys. And you're special in the sense that you will actually take a moment and give people some attention uh, that will support you, all right? At the end of the day, like, um, um, I'm opening up all sorts of social media, all sorts of like, places where there's like millions of people, thousands of comments, blah, blah, blah. It can actually get kind of exhausting even as the viewer, right? So then if you think about that, have some compassion for the viewer even, how can you potentially um, make the viewer's day? or make the day of somebody that could potentially find what you're finding, what you're working on interesting, all right? Um, you know, if it's Chesky, for example, I'm sure like a, someone who's up and coming in chess or just like is interested in the game on Reddit or interested in the game uh, in like Braden's DMs and Braden gives them 25 minutes of his time for an intro lesson, free lesson, that'd be sick. You know, I'm sure they'll remember that for a long time. And then of course, it's up to them if they didn't want to subscribe to Chesky, right? That's kind of how I see it. Um, and I think as a creator, this is kind of hard. Your goal is not to sell them anything. It's the hard part. Um, and your goal also isn't to like become their best friend. Um, it's somewhere in the middle. <laughs> um, and it's like a really hard line to kind of tread. Um, because then if, if I'm Braden and I'm selling Chesky and I get in the call, then all they're thinking about is, fuck, this guy's just trying to upsell me for a $10 monthly package to his chess software. This is, this is damn it. Um, uh, but then also, like, you know, not trying to become your friend because you can't become everyone's friend, very hard. Um, it's somewhere in the middle. So you have to tread that line as a creator. Um, and again, so what do you do um, on these calls, on these emails, on these whatever, that, on these in real life conversations that you have with the people that are interested in what you're working on? It's just to learn. You just want to learn about their life. You want to learn about their existence. And then at the end, you want to present a solution if you've got one. Again, kind of like my dad selling a car. You just learn a lot about their life, about their family, about their existence. And at the end, hey, if they want to like, um, if they seem really protective of their teenager and selling the blind spot detector thing makes sense, then he'll do it. You know what I mean? That's kind of like the difference uh, versus just being like, hey man, buy these blind spot detectors for $2,000. It's like, no man, I just want to get in my car and leave. Um, so it's like, you got to kind of think about that. Uh, kind of like one mental model or one mental picture I would like to paint for you is um, imagine going to a party and then having you at the front waving, like you see someone, you're like, hey, you know, like you're just waving at them, you're like, you're clapping when they come, you give them a high five when they walk in the door, you know, like, you know that feeling where like you see where a person would do that for you versus you show up at the door of your party, right? And you're, it's, you look at the door and it says scan a QR code, first of all, like, okay, you scan a QR code and then it's like, okay, like now go to the back. Okay, now you go to the back. Okay, now pay me, now, now authenticate with Google. Okay, cool, I'm gonna authenticate with Google and then I get into the party, right? Like that's, instead of doing all that, why not just greet them at the door? Like why are you making your life so hard? Um, uh, just let them into the party and, and it'd be a lot more fun if you greet them like that too. And again, use this mental picture to kind of like, uh, um, to kind of like help you understand how to use a strategy based on what you're working on, right? I think that's super important. Um, and by the way, I want to distinguish this from networking because this can easily start sounding like networking. Uh, what is it? Let me tell you what networking is for a moment. Uh, this is what networking is. You are making fake friends and connections to move yourself forward uh, for your own purely selfish reasons. Like that's kind of what networking is to me. Um, and conversation just means getting to know each other, right? There's actually a difference. And um, I kind of want to go through just a couple of examples here. 
Um, and feel free to chime in if you have any other thoughts on each example. Um, but this is what Anish and Amar are working on, right? They're making a product that helps you buy things as an AI shopping assistant. Uh, are they here right now? Yes. Um, so I think last week they told me that, you know, it's kind of hard to get people to kind of show up and buy something and do the whole flow, right? Like that's kind of like one of the problems. Like buying something is kind of like a longer term ordeal technically, right? Um, and I remember last week Rana bought a camera. And I think my thought today while making this presentation was, damn, what if they made like a Calendly link which essentially said, hey, book a time with us and we will help you buy your camera, like right on the call. Like we are your shopping assistant. And in the background, you're using your, your tool, right? Sounds kind of weird, right? Sounds kind of like twisted, but at the end of the day, what does the person want? They want to buy a camera. They want to buy the book, right? Damn, okay, can I just hop in a 20 minute call with you, literally figure it out right there with you, like with a human assistant that's actually using your tool in the background, and then they buy it right there from your website, boom, done. Again, I don't know if that'll work, but I think there's a much higher chance that it can work, you know? So like, you are, um, you're playing a different game. You're playing the one-on-one -on -one conversation game. Um, which I think could possibly work, right? So again, that's just kind of one idea for like, because I think one-on-one -on -one kind of like, um, um, the one-on-one -on -one interactions can actually be built into anything you all do. And this is just one example for, for them. Um, this is really interesting, right? Uh, so in this case, um, they're working on a diabetes kind of a, a tracker, right? A diabetes assistant, so we'll call it a person, how do you guys describe it to Like a personal diabetes assistant? Cool, so essentially like the best way to describe it today is just that they, um, like what do you think is the number one reason someone uses this today? Yeah, essentially, and then there's like an AI bot built into it, right? So I never tried it, I, did, I, still, I still have not connected my Dexcom. But I think um, on this one in particular, my first thought every time I see this tool is that, damn, they should just book one-on-one -on -one calls with people with diabetes and then show them this. and then. If they just do 30 of those in a day, how many of those at the end will want to buy this? It's really up to them, right? But again, imagine you show up to a website and it says, hey, like $20 a month, personal diabetes assistant, versus $20 a month, or versus like book a call with us and let, me, let us show it to you, right? Now, so if someone with diabetes, you know, which seems like a painful disease, that seems kind of better, right? Versus like another robotic flow that I go through. I don't know if it's real. I get scammed all the time in the medical industry. Uh, I'm going back to Facebook, you know? Um, versus like, oh, like I just book a call with them and I'm gonna get a person? Okay, cool, like, let's check that out. One other example, kind of for Niyati, you know, this kind of makes even, this is the hardest even one to understand, but like, damn, I'm sure some of your viewers kind of, kind of like feel what you are saying, right? Damn, what if 20 minutes, what would, what would it take to have 20 minutes with one of them? Um, to at least learn from them, to at least, for them to get a sense of what you're working on, um, for them to get a better, better understanding of you, right? There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's like a superpower. Um, I wish I could still have one-on-one -on -one conversations with everyone who comes through Bill's face. Like, that'd be amazing. Um, but I can't, it's hard. So you should do this while you can, because it's really fun. Um, I wanna give you one small example from just my own, my own past. This is Convoke. He's like my third favorite artist of all time. He's a rapper. And at one time I met Convoke randomly um, at a video game tournament. And uh, this guy was just, first of all, he's just the nicest guy ever. Like, he saw me, I'm like, I'm like, are you Convoke? He's like, yeah, man. It just, we just, we just hugged me and he just said, what's going on, dude? Uh, what's your favorite song? And uh, you know, I said, I fucked up with my favorite song. He's like, yeah, yeah, nice, dude. And um, he spent an hour with me. He spent an hour with me just hanging out with me, just talking to me. It was one of the coolest things that's ever happened like, to me because I like, loved the guy. He was like my, one of my favorites. Um, so seeing him was like mind blowing. Um, and then to, to, this, to this day, that was like four or five years ago, to this day, every time he drops a video, a tweet, an Instagram story, I don't care what he drops, I'm like on it, you know? I'm like, what is Convoke saying? Because it almost feels like, I'm not def definitely not friends with Convoke, but I really enjoy what he's putting out, I enjoy who he, I, I thought he was a good person, um, and I wanna keep supporting him, that's it. Um, and you know, I don't think Convoke, when he talked to me, was trying to make me a fan, I think he was just being himself. So that's another way, another kind of thing to think about. But yeah, it's crazy. He, every time he drops anything, I'm there in a moment's notice. Me and Alec both, actually. Um, and my last and third final thing I want to talk about is on how to like up your selling game, no matter what you're working on. 
is please pick the easiest person to sell to. Um, I want to give you an example again. Uh, in 2018, we were, we were working on BuildSpace. Uh, at the time, BuildSpace, we called it BuildSpace. Uh, we actually reused the name. But at the time, we were working on a cloud IDE for uh, college students. So basically, if you join a computer science uh, major, you have to like set up, do a bunch of setup, right? Around your terminal, around your coding environment, et cetera. Essentially, they would spend the first week on just helping you set up your coding environment so you could code on your laptop. It was kind of ridiculous. So you know, after college, me and Alec were like, we should make something that makes it such that you don't have to fucking do that, right? And then so we were off, right? We literally built the product in like, it took us like two weeks to build it. Uh, we built it and um, we tried to sell it to schools. And if you know schools, uh, universities take six to 12 months to sign a contract. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, this is like one of those ideas that a lot of people do. Kind of like a, the other idea people do a lot is like an app that helps you split your bill. Like that's the other really popular app people make. Again, this is one of those popular apps. We had no idea. Um, and again, yeah, it takes, us, it takes us 12 months to lock down a contract. Like we didn't know that. So we spent three months on just that and then we gave up <laughs> on that. But then we were like, okay, okay, maybe schools aren't it. Let's sell to students, you know? And that was our great idea. Can anybody tell me what happened? If you try, yes. Students have no money. Have no money. That is the learning. Uh, we failed horrendously. Why? We picked the hardest people in the world to sell to, schools and students. Now, in retrospect, it makes perfect sense. Um, but in the moment, we, just, we didn't think about that. We didn't think, we were so deep in it that we didn't even think that, that these people were difficult to sell to. In retrospect, I wish we sold to people that were easier to sell to. For example, like, the tool is actually really good. Could this have been sold to, like, I don't know, uh, people tutoring 12-year-olds in programming? Sounds a lot faster. Sounds like I just have to go to the parent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I actually have to build my own when I introduce it. Yeah. yeah like I, I the exact same thing. Shit, dude, you see what I mean? <laughs> dude, we should start a company together. <laughs> yeah, so sounds like a lot of people have the same thoughts. And again, like, it's cool. In retrospect, you can look back, right, and like, think about these things. But in the moment, it was so hard. We were just so locked in, like, student, 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 school, 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 you know? So it was like, and you know, we had so many people tell us that was going to be hard, and we were like, ah, you know, nah, you know. Um, like many of you, uh, we also learned the hard way um, over many years. At the end of the day, no one can tell us enough that it's not going to work. Give us all the advice in the world isn't going to shift our minds. You know, we were we were kind of just stubborn. Um, but yeah, we picked the hardest people in the world to sell to, and I think a lot of people, a lot of you, will end up picking really difficult people to sell to. Not saying you're doing that right now. Actually, I think most of you are kind of okay. Um, but you can always make it easier for yourself. You know what I mean? Like you can always change who your target is to make it easier um, because you choose, right? So I think, you know, Ryan, you're selling clothing, right? So clothing's actually pretty hard to sell, like to just your average person on the street, right? Like it's kind of hard for them to then first learn about it, then like it, then they gotta, it has to fit them properly, blah, 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 right? So even my first thought with clothing is that who can buy clothing in a way that's maybe faster and lower, lower uh, what do you call it? Um, um, so there's not as much like push you have to do, right? Um, so again, we can go through options all day, but again, I've, I've had a clothing company before, I sold to companies, right? I would sell like 50 of the same hat to companies, 50 of the same shirt to companies, right? Um, but again, at the end of the day, who knows if that would be better? It's just worth a shot. But you can just know, you can kind of like adjust who you sell to at the end of the funnel in like little small ways. Don't like do massive shifts, like one week, you know, you're selling to developers, the next week you're selling to like I don't know, like basketball players, you know what I mean? Like these are big shifts. Like just experiment around with who you actually are trying to get it to. I think that's okay. Um, but if you have questions there and you're not sure, you can always ask us. Um, I think Bonnie, yours is really interesting where like Bonnie could really complicate this actually, right? Um, in the sense of like, I don't know, let's, who's your customer today? Like as of today uh, for this thing? Um, well, my plan was to go to gift shops this weekend and ask them if I could um, maybe just like be there for the weekend and wrap people's gifts at cost. Great, cool. No, yeah, it makes sense. I think on that, even just hearing that, um, always kind of stay flexible, right? Because for all you know, no gift shop replies to you, yeah. and that's okay, right? But then it's like, okay, who's someone else that's maybe like 
less push is required for me to get through the door. Um, um, so even for you, there's so many places for like this to like be sold and like become a thing. Um, just no need to get married to a specific like segment, you know, or a specific type of like strategy. Again, I've done it so many times. So yeah, if that happens to me, it can definitely happen to you. Um, yeah, Abel, you know, he's selling to where's Abel right here somewhere. Oh yes, uh, you're selling to uh, medical students. Um, sounds hard, you know. Doesn't sound impossible, but sounds hard, right? Is it hard? Uh, yeah. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's hard. So I think even when I see something like this, my kind of thing is like, hey, like, don't kind of like get caught up in the rut of selling to medical students. Like, who's somebody else that's maybe slightly adjacent that we can try out this week? You know, um, you can argue that this is like losing focus, but honestly, I don't know. It sounds like you spent a lot of weeks on medical students. Like, maybe let's try something else. You know, like maybe let's adjust a little bit. Um, we can, maybe you can change who you sell to. Um, and maybe it'll be, uh, you, you have to like do, you have to force your way into the door a little bit less, right? Cool, so those are my kind of three, my three, this, my three, I guess, tips or my three learnings from what I've, what I've kind of like, uh, just things that work for me, basically. At the end of the day, I, I don't like to call this advice. Um, this is just what works for me. And I think you guys can take away from this uh, what you please. Um, but my main thing is don't be this guy, you know? I know you don't think you're being this guy, but when I see some of you making reels, and at the end you're like, go to my link, I'm like, ah. <laughs> you just look like this guy, you know? Like, and nobody wants to interact with this guy. Um, or I see your twi tweet, it's like a beautiful tweet, and at the end you're like, check out my thing. And I'm like, well, again, I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, you can try uh, all day. Keep trying, yeah, of course, you know? Uh, uh, my, my biggest thing I want you to take away from this is to not stop all those shenanigans. Like, that's like playing the lottery. You should play the lottery like every day. That sounds dope. Um, especially because it's a free lottery. That's even more dope. Uh, uh, but that's what socials are. That's what posting on these large platforms are. But don't, don't let that be your strategy. <laughs> you know, like that's not a strategy. That's, uh, that's not a strategy to sell. St strategies to sell at this stage should be more like 1-1. One, one. They should be a lot more kind of like direct, right? And yeah, just, just be a little more like this guy, you know? Look at him. Um, and yeah, I think if that happens, I think, you know, like the group will end up looking a little bit less like this, and maybe a little bit more like this, actually. Um, you'll still have people in all sorts of stages, right? But I don't think it's that crazy for you all to have like a big push by the end of this week, like every single one of you. And I know I have a very good idea of the states of every single one of your projects. Um, I see what you're doing. I watch your exam days. I see your updates in the chats. I have a pretty solid sense of where most of you are at. Well. 95% of you. Um, and yeah, I feel like you got something, you just gotta like really start selling it. Um, and I think that's, 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 all, that, that's, that's what it's gonna take. At the end of the day, remember, I can sit here all day and say these things to you, and I think for some of you it'll hit, for some of you it won't. Uh, but we're here for you. Uh, email me if you need me. I think a lot of people are kinda, don't know how to get in touch with me. Uh, yeah, just email me. I don't check my phone much. Um, uh, but email me, I'm always around, far as that bill space. Uh, and I actually look at that often. Uh, one on one with Amit, please continue. Uh, bugging Amit for one on ones. Please continue barging into our office. The, who, who's barging into our office? I'm curious. Damn, a lot of you. Continue barging into our office. It's totally okay. If we don't want you there, we will literally say no. And <laughs> I've done that many times. Um, I think it's okay. Uh, get Sami's music to hype you up. You know? <laughs> do, do whatever you got to do uh, by Friday, right? Um, and again, remember inputs over outputs. At the end of the day, like, I don't want you all to be like mentally down if your graph doesn't go up, because it's one signal, you know? As long as you're happy every week with your inputs and what you're actually putting into the, into the game, because that's the only thing you control. I can't like stress that enough. It's very easy to get caught up in the idea that uh, you're flatline or you're going down or you're flopping. I don't know. I don't, it's, just, it's just one graph. Um, there's many graphs that we could look at. <laughs> um, and that's it. Yeah. Any questions? Any questions? Yeah, nice. Yes. 